And we have liftoff. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming along to the BGL ID webinar today. My name is Warren Rendon, and I'm the general manager of CAS360 ecosystem and brand, and brand at BGL. And I'm very excited today to take you through uh, BGL ID. Um, first of all, thank you for coming along and spending the time uh, this afternoon or this morning, wherever you are, with us. Um, if you've been a long time BGL customer, thank you for coming back to uh, one of our webinars. And if you are new and not a BGL customer, thank you for stopping by. Hope all is well. And I hope you enjoy the next uh, 30 or 40 minutes or so. Now, as part of today's session, we do have, uh, I'm expecting a number of questions. We do have the Q&A uh, section of Zoom. If you do have any questions, please type away in there. I'll do my best to answer any of the questions that come through. We also have uh, Shami, who is a CAS360 product manager, uh, answering questions as well in the chat. So if you do have any questions, please head over to the Q&A uh, for any of those questions. But what I'm going to do today is go through uh, the slides. Before we start in anything for BGL ID, I just want to introduce you all to the BGL product suite. Um, so we do have a number of products here at BGL, obviously CAS360 for all of your company secretary, company compliance and trust compliance, uh, Simple Fund 360 for your SMSF administration, uh, Simple Invest 360, a complete uh, accounting and investment and tax software for managing trusts, companies and individuals, and obviously SmartDocs, the newest uh, product there, a uh, AI powered paper to data solution. So that is what we do at BGL is we build products primarily for accountants. So in this session today, I'm going to cover what is BGL ID? Uh, how does BGL ID work? Uh, why you should use BGL ID? The benefits of BGL ID? And then I'm gonna cover off a live demonstration. What's next? And the all important pricing. So let's get started and talk a bit about what is BGL ID? So BGL ID from its very basic beginnings is a client identity verification service. It has been designed specifically for accounting firms. And that's one of the big differences. BGL, we build applications for accounting firms. Okay. And that's what BGL ID is for. It's for the accounting firms. Uh, there are a couple of questions coming through. Is the session being recorded? Yes, the session is recorded. The slides are saved and you'll get both the recording and the slides uh, after today's session. Um, back to BGL ID, it is um, built into your BGL applications, okay, and this starts with CAS 360, and when I go through the demonstration today, you will see BGL ID being used from inside CAS 360, okay, um, very important that BGL ID is its own application, but it sits inside these products for your use. All the BGL ID data is linked to contacts that sit inside CAS 360. So it links to the contact and allows for that identity verification of that contact. Obviously, CAS 360 is the first application to have BGL ID, but Simple Fund 360 and Simple Invest 360 will have BGL ID integration coming very soon. What's important for you to know about BGL ID is that there is no extensive setup or no new application training required. All we have done is added a couple of extra buttons to CAS 360 and soon Simple Fund and Simple Invest 360. So there's no new application to manage, no new subscription to, uh, to purchase as part of this. It's built into your BGL applications. Getting a couple of questions around, do I need CAS 360 to use BGL ID? Uh, in its very first release, yes, uh, you will need CAS 360 to use BGL ID because that's where it's linked. But as I said, coming soon it will be linked in Simple Fund and Simple Invest 360 as well. So you'll be able to utilize BGL ID across the entire BGL suite and a little bit more. To get started, all you need to do is have a credit card, right? That is primarily how we bill. You can even use the uh, credit card that is already linked to your firm's existing subscription if there is one, but that's all. No extensive setup, no training, very easy to get started. So how does it all work? Well, at its heart, BGL ID verifies the identity documents of your clients with the issuer. So this is a really important part. Not only do we get the identity information, we verify that against the issuer. So you can be confident and be sure that the identity data provided by your client 
matches that of the record holder. So if, they, if we are verifying a passport, for example, that data has been verified against the Department of Foreign Affairs database. So it is verified from the issuer, obviously for an Australian passport. We do also support non-Australian passports. Okay, so we do support international passports. They must be registered with the Australian government though. Okay, and that is essentially anyone who's on a visa will have their passport registered with uh, the Australian government. So it doesn't have to be an Australian passport. It can be a foreign passport as long as it's registered with the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs. We will also verify driver's licenses against the various state authorities. So we're able to use that as an ID source and coming soon will be Medicare, which is verified against the Department of Health Records. So most importantly, we are verifying the data against the issuer of that ID. Okay, so we are able to tell you with certainty that, um, that the person is who they say they are, or at least what they on their ID. BGL ID goes a little bit further than that though, because we've added an extra couple of checks that are part of the products. So BGL ID also includes AML screening. So what we are doing here is we are checking the AML database to see if there have been any AML uh, I suppose, cases or findings or incidents against that particular person. So that is built into BGL ID. We also will do a PEP, so politically exposed persons. Uh, AML is anti-money laundering, sorry for <laughs> using the acronyms. Uh, PEP is politically exposed and obviously global sanctions as well. Okay, so we are doing a AML, a PEP and a global sanctions screening on each person that goes through BGL ID. We do have a, a more advanced check that includes adverse media findings as well, okay? So adverse media screenings to check if there is any adverse media against that particular person. When you are onboarding a client, it will be great if you could verify their identity, but if you want to verify their identity, but then find out they've been, they've got global sanctions or they're on an AML list or they've had some adverse media for fraud and things like that, maybe you want to, have a bit of a think about if you want to take that client on. So BGL ID offers both the ID verification and the AML PEP global sanctions and adverse um, news screening. This is done through Frankie One, who is our DVS provider. Um, you will receive an instant result and I'll go through that in the demonstration today. There is no waiting, your result is instant. It happens right there. As soon as you click the button or as soon as your client clicks the button, you get that instant result and you get it all with an identity verification report. Okay, so that report will be there and included in CAS 360. There we go. So BGL ID has two methods of completing an identity verification. Okay, so two methods, there's two ways that we do this. The first way is request ID verification. So this is where BGL ID will email a client requesting them to complete the verification themselves. Okay, so you can trigger this obviously at any point in time, but it goes through the contact list, sends out an email to that particular contact um, and, and requests for them to verify their identity requirements. And that will go through a flow where the ID will be verified and you will get the result. This is where you are essentially requesting the client to complete the verification themselves. So that's option one. And option two is verify ID. This is when you have the identity information. Okay, so you might even if that particular client is in your office, they're sitting next to you and you want to verify their identity. You can type in the information and click verify and you will get an instant result. So you have both cases covered off here. One where you can send a request to the client and get them to complete the verification. And second, which is when the client is right there and then, and you can click verify right there. So you have both of these options available in CAS 360 through BGL ID. The next thing I need to touch on is consent. Uh, important to both methods is obviously the entire consent model. Um, you are not able to run identity verification requests on people without their consent. So it is an important part of, uh, of any of these checks. Now, when you are using the first method, which is request for verification, 
or request ID verification, the client is entering in their ID details themselves. So, and there is a tick box there where they can confirm that they have given consent, but it's pretty easy for them to have consented when they're the ones entering in the data. Uh, when you are doing verify ID, there is a check that you need to do to make sure that the individual has consented for you to do that verify, but you are obviously able to do it, but you just need to make sure that you have got that consent in order to do that verification. So BGL ID does not store the identity data in its products, okay? You, you don't need to store it in there. Once you have the result, okay, the data doesn't need to be stored. In the case for request for ID, the data is never stored. Verify, obviously you have to put the data into verify, but once it's verified, you can remove it. So you don't need to store the data in there ongoing. Um, all of the verification um, response that you will receive does not contain any of the ID specific data. So it doesn't have the um, passport number or the license number, things like that. It only has that the docu what document type and that it was obviously successful or unsuccessful. Um, so you'll be able to see the result and the, and the ID document that they used to get that result. Obviously, when it comes to the anti-money laundering, the politically exposed persons, the sanctions and the adverse news, all of that is a public database. So you are obviously able to view that. And in some cases, you'll need to review that, obviously, when someone is flagged. So that all of that data does come into the product. So this might address some of the questions that are coming through. <laughs> so why should you use BGL ID? Well, first and foremost, both the ATO and TPB have issued client ID verification requirements. Um, in a lot of ways, that's why we're here, right? Uh, BGL want to help and assist in uh, completing these ID verifications for you, okay? So um, what BGL does, BGL ID does do is it does assist in satisfying those requirements. There is an ID verification requirement and BGL ID can be used to meet those requirements, okay? Um, so that's why we have built it and we are obviously keeping up to date with all of the requirements uh, that uh, the ATO and the TPB issue. Um, but secondly, it's to minimize your risk so that you know who your clients are. So I used the example before when you can verify someone's ID, but you might find that they've got some AML sanctions or some politically exposed persons or even some adverse news against them. What BGL ID allows you to do is to verify the people that you are doing business with, and more importantly, verify the people that you are representing to the government, right? So you are lodging documents on behalf of these people. It would be nice to know that, uh, or at least maybe assuring to know that, uh, that they are who they say they are, okay? Um, there's obviously uh, an AML and a CTF legislation that exists in Australia. Accountants at this point are not captured under that legislation, but there has been some news articles that are suggesting that they may be. Um, and also, if you are a legal pr practitioner or a conveyancer joining the call, there are some state uh, legal requirements as well. But certainly, um, if you're not doing any ID verifications, um, read the ATO and TPB requirements because you need to be following those requirements and BGL ID come, goes a long way in helping you assist uh, and satisfy those requirements. Uh, the benefits of BGL ID. First and foremost, simple access to identity verification, right? No new application, no new um, product training. You get that ID verification in your existing application stack, okay? In your existing application stack, okay? Uh, no lock-in contract or monthly minimum. Again, for those of you that may be using ID verification applications out there today, um, I'm sure that there's a contract or a monthly minimum that you have to meet. With BGL ID, we have neither, okay? You pay as you use. If in one month, you might onboard 15 new clients and you need to go through this process, okay? The next month, you might onboard 50 clients. We don't make you increase your subscription, right? You just pay as you use, okay? Second, or Next is it's made by BGL. It's made by us, the company that has been around for over 30 years supporting accountants in Australia and building applications for you. So CAS Desktop, CAS 360, Simple Fund Desktop, Simple Fund 360, Simple Invest 360, all of these applications made by BGL, uh, who have a, a long track record of building great applications and supported by the BGL support team. 
So you know you're going to get support from the BGL support team in Melbourne. So I think it's time we had a bit of a look. So let's have a look at BGL ID in action. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my contact in CAS 360. And what I have here is my contact, Doris. And I've just got some basic information for Doris, right? I don't need to have too much information to get this started. Um, just the name, address, email address, and date of birth. Because what we are going to do is go through the process of verifying that. Now, I did mention at the start that you've got request for ID and verify as the two options. On the top right hand screen, I've got my two buttons here. BGL ID has been enabled. I've got request ID verification and verify identity. So there are my two options. If I go to the compliance tab, so the compliance tab is live in CAS 360 today. This is where I'm able to add that identity information. So I can see here I've got Doris's name information, the license number, the expiry date, where it was issued, and obviously the card number. Now down here, I've got some cited information that I can put in as well. Now, if Doris had given me this information, I don't need to go through the request flow. I can click on verify identity. So if I clicked on verify, that would go through the process now of verifying that driver's license data. Okay, and it would give me confidence that I have verified that information. So first of all, I've seen it, then I now verify it. But if Doris <laughs> hasn't given me that ID, I would go through the request ID verification flow. So that is what I'm going to do now. So just go to my information, click on request ID verification. Okay, select BGL ID. And up comes my two check products, okay? So what I've got here is the Australian Government ID check, which will check the ID database. It will check the AML database and the Global Sanctions database. So that's $7 plus GST. And then I have my uh, Australian Government ID advanced, okay? And that covers off those three items and then the adverse news, okay? So I can click proceed because I'm going to select my $7 check. And for those that use CAS 360, next comes a very familiar screen, one that you'll all know and love. And that is where you send the email out of CAS 360. So here you have complete control of how the email looks and feels. We obviously have a baseline version, but you have complete control over that email. We've got a 21 day expiry on the request and I hit send. That's it. We have now sent a request to Doris for her to complete her ID verification. Now, every request is stored and record, recorded in messages and in the ID verification tab. Okay, so I can see here are all of my pending ID verifications and some of the results that have come through. So you always have a track of all of those ID verifications. Now if I head over to my email, hit refresh, I have here my ID verification for Doris. So here is the email and here is exactly how it looks. And now we are in Doris's shoes. So this is what your client will see. Now the whole process for your client has been built so that it will work on their computer or work on their phone, work on their iPad, everything like that. We're, we're trying to make it as simple as possible, obviously, for your client. So as you can see, up comes the email. Hopefully the email is not a shock to them. <laughs> Hopefully you've had a discussion with them at some point to let them know that there will be an ID verification request coming through. And all they need to do is click on verify identity. And that will launch BGL ID. The first step is a two-factor code, which we've all become quite accustomed to. So all I've done is requested that that two-factor code is sent through. So just go back to my email. My two-factor code is here, and I'll copy that in. So from here, once the two-factor code has been entered in, we are on our BGL Verify Identity screen. So this is what your client will see, and we've got some very simple instructions for your client. And all they need to do is click on Add Identification and select the document that they are going to verify. So for this particular example, I'm going to select Driver's Licence. Now with Driver's Licence, it will pre-fill, obviously, the data that we already have in the above screen, which is based on the data that we have in CAS 360. It can be changed if maybe you've made a spelling mistake. 
can select uh, obviously the issuing country. And now all I need to do is enter in the specific details of that license, which I actually already had in CAS 360. So we head over to Doris, go to my compliance tab. What I have here is my license number. So I'll put that into the license number field. Should select WA first to be honest, but put that in the license number field. And then I have my expiry date, which is just first of the first 24. Didn't work. There we go. And then I have the card number. Now the card number can be a little bit controversial for a driver's license. Hence we've put this what's this link here. So on every driver's license, and this is just the, BG, the CAS 360 help page, but on every driver's license, you'll have the license number and a card number. We've got a nice little article here explaining which state and where that card is or where that number is. And for WA, it's just on the back. So luckily, luckily for me, I already have it here. And I can copy that. Head over to my card number and we're done. So all your client needs to do now is click on submit. We will validate that data, make sure that data matches all of the requirements. And then we have the all important consent. So if I click on consent, it's done. That's it. The ID verification has now been done by your client. Okay. Um, in the background, we are now verifying that data and collating the result and sending the result to CAS 360. So if I go to my contact and hit refresh for Doris, and there it is. Doris's identity has been verified. I've got a number of options or a number of uh, bits of information here that can show me all of the data that I need. First and foremost, for Doris, it has government ID passed. And it says the match source is Australian government ID driver's license. So here, I'm now confident that the, the Doris her identity has been verified and has been verified against the driver's license database. Okay, so uh, state issued driver's license in Australia, completely verified. We've also got a PEPs and sanctions pass, which means that uh, Doris has passed the PEP and sanctions check. Uh, there's no uh, sanctions against Doris. Over on the left-hand side, you might see a little bit of uh, information here. What we've got is a risk level, okay? So this is a risk level that is that is provided to you. Obviously, in the case where the ID passes and the PEPs and sanctions passes, the risk level is going to be low. Um, but depending on the information that is found in those PEP and sanctions checks, though that risk level might rise. And obviously, the verification status has succeeded. So we now are confident that the verification process has been completed and it has succeeded. We also have a identity verification result report and it has all of the information here, including the timestamps, when it was done uh, and everything like that. So you have a nice completed report about that identity verification. Now, that is the process of an identity verification that has passed. What if our ID verification passes, but there is a fail on the PEPs and sanctions? Now, this is obviously where you need to investigate what has happened and basically see if there is a match for this particular PEP and sanctions. So what I'll do is I'll just explain. The ID verification is exact. It's either a yes or a no. It, it, there's nothing in between. It, it either matches exactly or it fails. When it comes to PEP and uh, AML and sanctions and adverse news, there's a what an element of what they call, call fuzziness where the name may be close. Now, in my case, I've got dummy data, so the names aren't all that close. But for your real clients, you might have names that are very, very close, okay? Or even the same as your client. And in that case, you're going to need to do a little bit of research or a little bit of checking on these fails, especially when you have people with very common names, okay? If you've got a client with a unique name, chances are everything's going to be fine. With the common names, um, uh, from time to time, there might be a little bit of extra checking that needs to be done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Judy here. And what I have here is some AML results for Judy. 
Now, as I mentioned before, mine is dummy data. So the, uh, the, the um, mismatch stands out quite obviously, but for real data, the name matching will be very, very similar. What I have in Judy's result is I have a result for someone named Jonathan. Now, Judy is not Jonathan, but with real data, you might have someone also named Judy, maybe a very similar um, name completely. And I can see that this particular person is on a sanctions list, actually on a Russian sanctions list. I'm not sure if the ma name's matched here. I'm not sure if I'd want to do business. Maybe I need to do a little bit of checking. But what we've got here is the system identifying some information and bringing it to you. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to pass this because the names aren't a match and I'm confident that this person isn't the person that's coming up on the list. But as I mentioned, it's dummy data. So it's deliberately doing this. You will have a lot similar uh, names and very close names. And you might have to do a little bit more checking. So in this case, what I'm going to do is click on my failed dropdown. And I'm going to manually pass. OK, and I can confirm that that has been manually passed and that person will no longer appear in my fail group because what I've been able to do is pass and verify um, that that person isn't that person <laughs> or at least I'm satisfied that that person isn't that person and I'm able to move on. Obviously, in your contact screen, you, your global contact screen for CAS, you do have a BGL ID filter where you can see all of your verified clients. OK, we've also added the government ID and AML verification to the officers screen. So if you're adding a director, you can do that. And even when you're adding a new contact, when you complete the contact form, you can kick off a request ID verification straight away as well. And just to cover off when there is an ID verification that is completed, you will receive a notification that you'll be able to uh, be stored there. And obviously, if I was to go all the way back to my messages, my ID verification, it now tells me that Doris's ID has been passed. I can see there's 30 questions in the Q&A. Uh, I'll finish the slides and then I'll get to those questions. So let's talk about the release of BGL ID. So BGL ID was actually released at the start of September. We have a early access group of around 100 firms that are using BGL ID at the moment. So it is being used and it's being uh, well, very, very well received. As you can see, it's rather simple to go through that completion process. Um, we are looking to officially launch it for all CAS 360 clients in the next two weeks or so. Okay, so that will be launched and available for all CAS 360 clients in that next two weeks. However, if you can't wait, um, head over to the BGL website, um, click on in the products drop down BGL ID, and you can register for early access. And we will uh, add all those that register for early access in the next 24 hours. And if you do register for early access, we'll give you five verifications for free, as long as they're done this month, October. So there you go. Talked a bit about, or we saw pricing uh, a little bit earlier, but here is the official pricing um, for BGL ID. So it is uh, direct, direct debited at the, on the first day of the following month, okay? Um, and it is $7 plus GST for an Australian government ID check, which will also do your AML and global sanctions check. Uh, it is $10 for your government ID check, anti-money anti laundering, global sanctions, and added adverse news check, okay? And we do have biometric scanning coming soon. So we don't have biometric scanning just yet, um, but we do have that coming soon and there'll be a price once that is launched. So what's next for BGL ID? So obviously once we launch, we've got a lot of big plans for this and it is an evolving product and uh, a product that we're, we're very excited to bring uh, uh, to the market. So the next phase is really uh, broken up into three. Um, first of all, we're going to expand the number of ID documents that we're able to verify. Okay, this will include Australian Medicare, um, and New Zealand driver's licenses, okay? And also Singapore IDs, so Singapore national IDs. We want to expand the number of IDs that, um, that we can verify. Obviously right now today, it's limited to Australian registered passports and driver's licenses, but we will continue to expand the number of uh, identity documents that we can verify. Obviously, biometric scanning, some of the feedback that we've got from the early access group is that they also would like a, a biometric scanning. 
We also have a requirement in New Zealand for our New Zealand clients that biometric scanning is important. So we will be adding biometric scanning. So BGL ID is obviously going to continue to expand the identity verification um, documents, but also the, the types of checks that we can do. But where we feel that we can solve a big problem for accounting practices is around the integration of BGL ID and having ID verification data not just appear in one application, but have it appear across a number of applications within the practice. So this will start with obviously our other products, uh, Simple Fund 360 and Simple Invest 360. We'll also then add it to Zero Practice Manager, okay, and then more, all right, more as they come available. What we think is that BGL ID can be the identity verification tool for the accounting industry, and it can be connected to all of your applications. That's where we want to take it. And we're going to have an open API where you're going to be able to have that verification result appear in other applications, okay? So we are looking to take it to this in this direction um, so that you don't, if you need to check if someone's ID has been verified, you don't need to close out of where you are and go and open up another application. You'll generally be able to see it as part of your standard process. Give you my email. If you have any questions uh, that I didn't answer as part of the 98 uh, please feel free to uh, click me through an email. Uh, I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you do have. Obviously, we're very excited about what BGL can do and BGL ID can do to help you going forward. But I will say to you now, if I can move to my next slide. Why can't I move to the next slide? We'll say to you now, thank you for coming along to today's session. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed the webinar and you enjoyed how BGL ID can help you meet these requirements and complete ID verifications and AML and PEP checks and sanctions checks and adverse news checks about your new clients. Um, obviously, what we are here to do is to help you meet the requirements uh, that are being set out for you and to help you comply. And should the requirements change, we'll continue to build applications that meet those requirements or at least assist in meeting those requirements. But what I will do is say thank you all for coming along today. I hope you are having, you are having a fantastic Tuesday. Uh, thank you very much. Bye for now.